Uh, this is one I don't see on YouTube. Um, not, I don't think there's any real videos on it that explain too much what it is. And I'm not going to go into any great detail because uh, there's a lot of secrecy involved around it. It's the Savard Doomsday Seed Bank that's up in near the Arctic Circle between Norway and Greenland. Um, the seed bank, you know, on its surface is a great idea. Actually, um, on its surface, I think it's a fantastic idea. You never know what can happen. There could be melting of the polar ice caps and more asteroid can hit the Earth, or there could be a nuclear war, or something can happen to the climate that can devastate the land. And So you have a seed bank, and there are various seed banks throughout the world. This is a picture of it, right? You know, it goes way down into the mountain. I mean, it really, it goes way down there. They keep it at minus 18 degrees uh, Celsius, so the seeds can stay in pristine condition for thousands of years. In other words, it's up in Antarctica, I mean, Arctica, Arctic Circle, and the area is extremely cold as it is, but besides that, it's refrigerated. And none of the seeds are GMO. None of them are genetically modified crops or anything like that. They're real seeds. And there are thousands of other seed banks throughout the world, but none of them are as well protected as this one. So on the surface, I think it sounds like a great idea. But I'm going to comment a little more on this because uh, I'm going to use common sense. But um, this is the location of a Savard, Savard, the island. It's part of Norway. It's like north of Norway. It's in the Arctic Circle. Here's, you know, showing like just the north part of Greenland over here. And, you know, just the North Pole basically right in this area. Okay? Where the arrow is. So it's... <laughs> It's about as far north as you're going to get, practically. It's a pretty damn remote area, that's for sure. So uh, it's deep down. It's well protected from asteroids and nuclear weapons and all this type of other stuff. Now, the one problem I have with it is this. I mean, I, in concept, I think I'll really like it, you know, in concept. But this is the problem I had with it. The people that are actually involved with it, that actually put it together, are Bill Gates the Rockefeller Foundation, Monsanto, and Syngenta, which are involved with Syngenta is like a Swiss-based firm involved with genetically modified crops. And you know about the old evil Monsanto with the genetically modified every damn thing, or Roundup and all the other crap they use. To, you know, there's been accusations they kill off the bees and stuff with your Roundup, or is that Bayer Corporation? I don't know. There's a lot of things being thrown around, but Monsanto is pretty damn evil. <laughs> it's like you don't have to really dig too deep to figure that out. The Rockefeller Foundation, are they a bunch of nice guys? Yeah, uh-huh. The old Baron Company <laughs> family, I don't know. And Bill Gates, you know, I don't know. I don't know, maybe there are some fans of Bill Gates. I'm not a fan of Bill Gates. It's one reason I don't like using, I don't even like using the um, Internet Explorer. I'll use Firefox or something. But, um... Uh, just looking at these people, like in other words, if the Savard, Savard Doomsday Seed Bank was put together by, you know, Attila the Hun, Adolf Hitler, Mussolini, and Al Capone, and they're telling me, and you know, on the surface, it looks like this is a really great idea to help save humanity. You know, considering who the hell is putting it together, I got some major suspicions, you know, and uh, I don't have any solutions other than, damn it. Grow your own crops, because I think I'm going to start myself here doing some of that stuff. And uh, it's like, uh, I don't know. I mean, uh, I've read a lot of number of conspiracy things about, you know, eugenics, you know, designing a master human race and all this other kind of crap. I've read things about the Rockefeller Foundation being involved with, you know, the Hitler people and the Nazi Germany and stuff like that and eugenics and all this other kind of crap. But, you know, there's something else. This is probably more reality because uh, I don't want to get too far deep into the conspiracy angle. But, like I said, so if you had, uh, you know, Attila the Hun, Adolf Hitler, Mussolini, and Al Capone come together and do a joint venture, um, and, and, you know, on the surface it sounds like a really good idea, you got to figure something ain't good with it because, you know, looking at these guys, 
Bill Gates, the Rockefeller Foundation, Monsanto, and Syngenta. And they're the ones behind the Doomsday Seed Bank. You know, something don't smell right with that. Definitely not. But anyway, um, this is a picture of the Georgia Guidestones down in Georgia. And, you know, these are erected with these Ten Commandments and stuff. And like the first one was, maintain humanity under 500 million, half a billion of perpetual balance with nature. And a lot of people point, and this, you know, let me put it this way. Somebody paid a hell of a lot of money to make these stones and put them up there in all these different languages and have them facing the right way, and, you know, with the um, astrological directions and stuff. There, It's like a, not a cheap, inexpensive project. Somebody, somebody did just spend a few bucks on this. It spent, cost a hell of a lot of money. And the suspicion is... It's the Rockefeller Foundation. I don't know, it's a suspicion, but you figure it's somebody with major big bucks. And, you know, the first line is where people have a lot of problem with it because you figure we got 7 billion people, and, you know, number one commandment is get them down to like a half a billion people, which means all these people got to disappear. So, I don't know why I'm putting this out here because I'm just going to worry the crap out of people, but... Uh, you know, if you want to do something constructive, I can tell you, I think the old the, the way is to go with, uh, just like these guys here are putting together this doomsday seed bank. Maybe that's what people need to do, put together a little doomsday food storage unit and garden and, um, you know, also those trays. You can do the sprouting garden in a trace, which is a pretty good thing. I have a bunch of those, too. So, um, you know... In reality, just looking at the characters behind this without trying to get into any kind of crazy, you know, tangents or going down any rabbit holes or anything like that, none of these people are people I have trust in or respect. Well, I have respect for them because they're powerful as crap, but I don't think they are out for the common real good of people in general. I think they're out for old number one. And... This is something else I want to point out. Like, you take a guy like Bill Gates. You think that guy's a lazy bum? Hell no. You know, if you're going to combat this type of stuff, I mean, besides just going on YouTube and looking up videos or something or whatever you're doing right now, this guy, Bill Gates, you got to work as hard as him. Basically, you know, if you think there's... I think this is... You know, I have food storage myself. You know... I'm not thinking about it too much, but, you know, every once in a while I read something and I'll try to be reasonable about how I present it. But if you work as hard as Bill Gates for your own survival without, you know, getting too worried about it, I think most people will be fine. And, you know, the way to actually, you know, if there was some kind of plan to knock people down to uh, 500 million in the entire world, uh, maybe there is a way around it. So... Um, and you know, you like the second line in here says, guide reproduction wisely, improving fitness and diversity. You know, some of the theories out there about this, uh, Subar Doomsday Seed Bank, it's basically when everybody's exterminated, or for the most part exterminated, they're going to come out with genetically modified super races, basically, you know, well, basically eugenics, um, People that will be born will be like a super master race. You know, actually, this is on a, this is there's been think tanks on this garbage, and if you look deep, there has been a major connection between the Rockefeller Foundation and the Nazis during World War II. So, you know, you know this stuff ain't good. Not let me put it to you that way. And you know, my common sense says plain and simple. Looking at the characters behind this doomsday seed bank, the whole thing really probably has some rotten other intentions that are going on behind the scenes. So, you know, if I'm going to offer a problem, I want to offer a solution. The solution really is to uh, go ahead and make your own seed banks, basically. Get into gardening, get into, um, you know, growing organic, uh, you know, bean sprouting with the trays and things like that, uh, you know, the wheat grasses and everything. Um, those type of things are actually very beneficial, and you can store seeds for a very, very long time if it's kept in a cool, dry container. Um, so possibly I would state, you know, if this is 
got some bad intentions to it? I tend to think so. But I don't like putting out stuff on here too much to worry the crap out of people. And I think really the real solution to that is to actually get into your own gardening and uh, sprouting trays. And to uh, keep a stockpile of food on hand. You know, if the doomsday doesn't hit, you all, you might have, you're not going to, you're basically going to use the food up at any point in time. So you're not going to be out of money. It's not like making a bad investment. You know, you're going to buy if you buy the food and it has an expiration date of two years or 20 years or whatever it is, as long as you consume it up and rotate and replenish it as time goes on, you're not out even one dime or one nickel. So, you know, it's not a bad financial decision. But uh, I want to point out about this damn uh, Zavard Doomsday Bank, the characters that are behind it are, in my opinion, Thoroughly evil, but very ambitious people. And um, I can't see something good about this, even though on the surface it sounds, it is a great idea on the surface. But I think they got some other plans involved. And I did want to relate um, to the Georgia Guidestones. You know, some big bucks people put this thing up. I don't know how many millions of dollars it cost. It cost tens of millions of dollars, like 20 feet high or something like that. And it's made out of um, pyramid blue granite. You know, it's like a special type of blue granite. It's very expensive. And they had to carve this in all these different languages, get the alignment right with the stars and astrological signs and all this garbage, you know, crap that's important to them. Um, you know, I'm surprised somebody didn't go there and, like, just knock it down with a bulldozer or something. But <laughs> I don't know. Uh, to me, it's like that wouldn't do no good anyway because as long as these jerks got the money, it, that's they got the power, and that's what it comes down to. So, anyway, I figured I'd post this, and I think it's an important point to consider. And uh, the solution to the doomsday seed bank is for people not to depend upon that because those characters are people you can't depend upon. Is to have your own seed banks, to have your own food storage, to be capable of growing your own food and be as independent as possible. So that's the best way I could say. You're not going to be out one single dime by doing that, and it's actually going to save you a lot of money to grow your own food.